The Division 2's control points, region territories, and donation system might be somewhat hard to grasp at first as to what exactly is the importance of all these intertwined mechanics. How this faction-controlled ecosystem actually functions is vital to understand, however, because it's the foundation for much of what's going on behind the scenes on the map and proves to be a great benefit to your agent's overall progression once understood. During your journey to take back Washington, D.C., you will come across enemy-occupied control points that can be taken by yourself or by calling in nearby support from AI companions by firing off a signal flare. It takes them roughly 30 seconds to make it into battle, so plan ahead and only fire this off when you're in a good position because it does alert nearby threats. After battling your way through waves of enemies, you'll be tasked with taking down the big boss leader. Once the outpost is cleared, a supply room will open up that is essentially a treasure trove of usually useful gear. Your faction will now occupy this control point, which opens up an entirely new supply donation and region satisfaction system, which we'll be getting back to shortly. Another bonus for taking these over is that they will now function as a fast travel point, which gives you a little more freedom when traversing the map. You can also get in the habit of returning every 24 hours to each of these supply rooms you occupy to get more free gear again as it restocks the basic gear containers in these rooms, just not the initial large one. Log in each day and do your regular rounds of supply rooms because you're now in charge of what is essentially a perpetuating gear farm. Now if you want to simply roam around the map and take down enemy control points just for the loot, that is a decent approach, but there are further benefits from maintaining these control points as we dive into the faction supplies and donation system next. Each control point you now occupy will have a leading officer that allows you to donate your components, food, and water that you've been collecting from all around the map by looting numerous containers scattered about. The more you donate and fill up these meters to satisfy a control point, the more experience you will accumulate that goes straight to your agent's level. This pretty much directly turns those supplies you've been gathering into raw experience. Also, once these three meters rise above 50%, the outpost will be satiated, indicated by these circles turning red to white. The better supplied a control point is, the more they will send out scavengers of their own that will attempt to accumulate some of these resources themselves by searching nearby supply nodes. Note that enemy factions can also be found scavenging the map as well, and deplete these nodes themselves, stop them if you get a chance. All three of these resource meters will deplete over time in every given control point if neglected, and you're further encouraged to keep these meters filled if you take the detection perk from your quartermaster. With this, once you have satisfied the required needs of a control point, containers and enemies in that sector will be highlighted for a time, making you more efficient in the territory you control. The control points themselves, and on the map, will indicate what supplies they are in need of, informing you on what you should set out to scavenge next. By zooming in on the map, you can clearly see supply nodes around you, which are displayed with a color indicator to show which faction is currently in control of that node. Now another thing to grab from your quartermaster that ties into all of this is the resource perk. This allows you to carry much more of those valuable supplies on you by increasing your overall capacity. As you might start to see, there's a very simple core flow to these systems once you understand each element. Find an enemy-occupied control point, take it down yourself or by calling in backup, reap the rewards from the supply room, turn your gathered components, food, and water into raw experience for your agent by donating them to control point officers, and then amass even more supplies, gear, and experience even quicker by maintaining control of that section of the city. Supply room access unlocked. And that pretty much sums up the main principles of the importance of control points, donating, and how the meta-level faction system is working behind the scenes and by your own influence. But, as I mentioned before, 
If you find this supply donation stuff to be somewhat convoluted and just want to avoid it, you can easily ignore most of it and be just fine. However, I do encourage you to jump over to a nearby control point from time to time just to dump your inventory, because you're essentially sitting on wasted experience if you go around too long with your supplies maxed out. If you enjoyed this style of content that attempts to help explain nuanced game mechanics and systems, consider subscribing and checking out my Patreon page, which helps to keep this channel operational and also allows me to give more back to supporters. As always, this has been Deadite from Boomstick Gaming. I really appreciate you sticking around till the end, and thank you.